let's talk about the big news from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Then we will circle back to the game um, itself and, and dive into that a little bit more. Um, also, I don't believe we told you off top about our buddy Clint Hammond. He is the presenting sponsor of our show, ClintHammond.com, 803-771-6933. Clint and his whole crew is now with Movement Mortgage, yeah, but nothing really changes here locally. If you have used Clint in the past or you're looking to possibly buy a house in the future, uh, give Clint a shout, 803-771-6933. Clint, not only a huge supporter of Gamecock Central, but a massive Gamecock fan. Chris, you and I got to meet up with Clint and his wonderful wife down in Jacksonville. So shout out to Clint. We saw him at the Patrick Davis concert, which was awesome, and uh, then caught him out there tailgating. So, uh, Clint, shout out to you, man. We definitely appreciate the support throughout uh, the last couple of years here on GC Live. But, Chris, the big news coming out yesterday, I know you had a chance uh, in an exclusive interview that was presented by Garnet Trust to chat with DeCarrion about his decision. DeCarrion uh, made that official yesterday with what I thought was one of the best video announcements I've frankly ever seen. Um, I've been hardened a bit, Chris, uh, covering football, but I had some like goosebumps going with that. Um, to carry on, you can tell um, takes his, uh, his new role coming up. Uh, I believe March due date. He said as a father, extremely seriously, this is someone in to carry on that has dealt with loss in his own life as far as that is concerned. And I thought, uh, before we get to the on-field part of it, it uh, and I would, Chris, you're obviously girl dad times two. What <laughs> did you think of the uh, DK announcement? I think he had a lot of Gamecocks in their fills last night. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was really the lead. The Wes in that video was his, his child, his new addition. I think it's March 12th or March 16th. Those are the two that are coming to my head. But, um, yeah, little girl due in March. Uh, definitely an awesome experience. We got a chance to talk about that a little bit as we were chatting for the interview. So he's obviously excited about that. Mentioned it in the interview, which you can check out on GamecockCentral.com if you have not already. Read that interview in full. But, yeah, I mean, his reasoning is something he's obviously thought through, Wes, instead of, hey, do I, do I maybe try my hand – at going pro, do I do I try my hand? Heck, even in another school, Wes, I mean, you see that all the time. You see guys who have one more year of eligibility go clean slate, play somewhere else. Um, this is a guy who obviously has a quarterback background. You would think he'd probably have options to do that somewhere, even if he wanted to. Uh, but instead, staying at South Carolina, he's really kind of put roots down here and mentioned that, you know, he, he's got a house in Columbia, uh, I thought it was really cool to hear him just talk about how his daughter's due date is in March. And obviously, they, South Carolina will kind of be in the middle of preparing for spring ball, spring practice around that time. Um, and it's just really important for him, he said, to be here. He said that's a very important time, um, you know, obviously early in his in his daughter's life. And so really cool to hear him talking about that. Like you said, responsibility that – He's taken very, very seriously. You know, we talked about NIL some. To carry on's done a really good job of building his brand and getting himself some opportunities. And um, he talked about just how he's conducted himself in that realm, even, and how he thinks that that's helped him gain more opportunities. So cool stuff. And I enjoyed talking with him uh, about the decision. Yeah. And Chris, I, I was going to bring that up. A lot of people talk about, you know, maybe the negative sides of NIL, but. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect example of someone who has carried himself the right ways on and off the field and has been able to take advantage of opportunities that have been presented by NIL. Uh, for one, all the credit in the world to him, Chris, in that he is very has a keen business sense, which I think is going to serve him extremely well after football is over. But you're talking about someone – who right now I think probably would be a risk to jump to the NFL as far as, you know, projections go because he hasn't, you know, he talked about it with you as well. He had some injuries going on the first half of the year, was kind of trying to get back. I thought he looked as explosive as we have ever seen him during kind of the final, what would you say, quarter or final third of the season. And yep. 
but but it would be a risk, I think, to jump. And now you're seeing NIL, like this is the perfect example of a really good college football player who's done everything to make himself um, a fan favorite among the fan base. Obviously, his bowl game last season, uh, you know, the Mayo Bowl, everything that came from that, none of those opportunities are there if not for what NIL has presented. And Carry On has done a fantastic job of taking advantage of it, and I think it takes some of the pressure off. He may, in an alternate reality, it felt like, oh, I'm about to have a child. I have to jump to the NFL and try to make it right now. This gives him a chance not only to still be in Columbia and be there, um, you know, for, for when she comes into this world, but also I would say, Chris, probably in a better spot to financially feel good about that as well, which um, we probably lose sight uh, of that sometimes with every with all the negative headlines about NIL. So um, from a big picture standpoint, I think it's worthwhile mentioning, but also just from a DK standpoint, um, his business sense, the fact the job he's done marketing himself, putting these deals together has been extremely impressive to watch from my end. Yeah, and I think to carry on, um, at least at one point, Wes, not too long ago, and I think it's still the case, I don't want to say for sure, is kind of representing himself like uh, most players or a lot of players rather, especially if they've got somewhat of a high profile or, you know, working with an agent, which is a lot of times great. But to carry on, like you said, has really developed a business sense. He has a really good understanding of this. He knows how to pitch himself. He has a lot of companies and businesses that go to him because they know that they're going to represent their brand the right way. I mean, you can hear him. He's done several things on 107.5 West. He's done some stuff, you know, commercial wise. Um, he's done social media campaigns. So he's been able to do a lot of stuff and, and good for him. And look, that that is, I mean, you, you hit a really great point in that a lot of people are talking about NIL and such and such getting, you know, a million dollars. And look, that is a lot more rare a lot, lot more rare in college football, whether it's guys coming from the high school ranks, guys that are already in college. The vast majority of NIL activity is exactly what we've heard from guys like DeCarry on or Josh Van or a bunch of other athletes where they don't have time to work, you know, and a lot of them, yes, they're getting their school paid for it. They have great meals. At least they look like it. They've never invited us to eat one, Wes. At the football they smell field. amazing. I'll tell you they, that. They smell amazing. They look amazing. Maybe one day. But that doesn't mean that they're just flush with cash, right? Uh, it, a lot of times it doesn't even mean that they and their family uh, have enough, right? And so sometimes I'll admit I get a little irritated when people say, well, why, why, you know, if, if it's a guy that is considering leaving, why is that guy just jumping at the first opportunity? He, he should come back and you know, work hard with his team. and It's not always that simple, right? Um, not everything is, is just a blanket statement, but uh, e each situation stands on its own. And for carry on, I do think he's making a good decision. Like you said, Wes, doesn't really matter what we think. It's his decision and what's best for him. But I think he's he's got great reasoning and a great outlook behind it. Yeah, and, and not to uh, – this is not a paid ad or anything, but he is coming back. He's a Gamecock all the way, maybe one of the most true through-and-through through Gamecocks we've seen around here in a long time. So um, I will say this. If you want to support DK, can't stop Cinco.com. He just put out a new shirt, run it back with a, a cartoon graphic of himself on there. Pretty cool shirt. So there it is, can't stop Cinco.com. On the field, Chris, I do want to get to this as well. Yeah. We saw South Carolina, I feel like, use him – the best we have seen down the stretch of this season. He brought, I would say, an extra element to the running game. He had a big catch down the seam in mm -hmm. the bowl game as well. What did you learn from him? I know there was a quote in your article. He said that um, he and Dow Loggins had talked. They're still yet to go over like the specific details, but I know we're going to be asked. It's going to be talked about all offseason because that was the case this past offseason too, but – what insight did DK give you on those conversations so far on how he may be used next year? 
Well, the biggest thing is, is like you said, there have not been those in-depth talks. They haven't sat down and, you know, gotten on the whiteboard and looked at film and all those things. Um, Dow Loggins did tell to carry on that, hey, we're going to have some fun. Uh, I think they've, they've spoken briefly, but they haven't had that in-person sit down, let's go over your role. Uh, but to carry on does seem to have a sense that he will be a bigger part of the offense going forward. And another sign, Wes, that he just has his head on the right way, I think, is he he didn't put it all on the coaching staff, right? I mean, he mentioned that he he feels like he'll be utilized properly next year. And so certainly if you're, you know, extracting some things for that, you could say, well, maybe that means he wasn't utilized properly in the past. And like you said, they, they figured it out more, I think, down the stretch. But another big part of it was to carry on admitted, hey, I, I wasn't able to do those things athletically from a health standpoint because he was banged up the first half of the season. And so he put it on himself to say, hey, I've got to make sure I'm available for my team and, and my teammates. And obviously with injuries, Wes, a lot of those things, you're, you're not able to help, right? But I, I thought it was just another sign, you know, of, of DeCaryon's maturity and kind of how he's going about this thing. But no specifics yet, Wes, on, on how he's going to be utilized. You would figure he's going to continue to have a special teams role. Uh, you would figure wide receiver. You would figure with Dow Loggins, um, you know, some quarterback and, and being – uh, another guy that they can utilize in the run game is something that we'll probably continue to see as well next season, but probably just more touches overall for to carry on. I think, I think might be a, might be a theme here. Yeah. And I thought they used him very well down the stretch. And if you're able to do some things in the running game, otherwise, and if you're able to keep making some plays, otherwise, like you did against Tennessee in the passing game, then having that extra element that to carry on brings, whether it's at quarterback, whether it's getting him the ball, you know, on reverses, but him being able to throw the football off of them. There are really some fun things you can do if you're going to continue to take that like wide open, fun approach to offense. Even, you know, even though the offense didn't have their best game against Notre Dame, especially in the first half when they were still able to make some first downs on other plays, I thought we saw them continue to utilize DK and you know, a variety of successful ways. And and it made it fun. I think it made it fun for him. I think it made it fun for the players around him as well and for the fans. So hopefully, I think that's what fans want to see. So hopefully they'll continue to do that going into next year because even with the less than – it wasn't the outcome they wanted against Notre Dame, but the offense was still more fun to watch, certainly than it was some of those other games when they were, like, really struggling, like, yeah. It's hard to say, oh, they struggled on offense when you compare it to some of the games earlier <laughs> in the year before they kind of changed their mindset a little bit. I mean, those were the real struggles. Like, they yeah. still scored some points on Friday. They still had some big plays. And uh, certainly, uh, DK and his versatility was a big part of that. So, we'll certainly be, I, sa I would say, uh, excited to see what he does moving forward and interested to see what that looks like with Dow Loggins, but he clearly, Chris, feels comfortable with, uh, with, with what that looks like moving forward. Yeah, he does. Um, I think he talked a lot about Shane Beamer and the direction that Beamer's taking the program and, you know, kind of talked about the year one, year two, and, and year three thing, you know, going into his final season as a Gamecock, his final season overall, and the, the third year of the Shane Beamer era. He talked about the buy-in he's seen from recruits. He kind of just has a really good – um, positive big picture. And I thought it was pretty, you know, telling and interesting, Wes, that he said, you know, football is fun for me at this point. I think to carry on, you know, while he didn't say this, I think certainly looking at his comments and just kind of having that conversation with him, I think he was one of those guys who at one point football just wasn't all that fun for him. I, we know we've talked about this before. We won't, go into it but the 2020 season just how hard that was COVID and a two-win team and all those different types of things and certainly there's a lot of just not not as as positive vibes Wes as there are now so he talked about that some and definitely feels very comfortable with uh, the direction that this thing is going heading into 2023.